Everyone, welcome back. Okay, so here we are, and this is just your McGraw-Hill Connect page. If you don't have McGraw-Hill Connect, um, you just look for your textbook. But I'm just showing everybody who has the e-textbook how they would do this. Now, the first thing I need to do is I launch my e-book. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to pop up to wherever I was last time. I was on page 221. Oh, nice! I'm already here. Now, I'm going to pretend I wasn't here because I want to show you how this looks. So I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to chapter 2. Okay. I'm here in chapter 2. So now I want to find the tables I'm going to be using for a lot of problems that deal with water, water vapor. Where do I find those? In the appendices. You scroll down to the bottom here. Keep scrolling down the bottom all the way there. And you get to either Appendix 1 or Appendix 2. If it's in the SI units, Appendix 1. English units, Evil units, Appendix 2. I'm going to do Appendix 1 because that will keep me from going insane. Now, which ones do we need to actually use here? I'm going to show you the tables that are most important to you. I'm going to have to capture my web page to do so. So give me one second to pull that up. Let's see. Where are you? Oh, is it gone now? Well, that's different. Okay, well, I'll show you differently because Edge is being strange to me right now. Either way. Yeah, so there you are. Either way, you're going to be using table A5, which is saturated water pressure table. Table A4, the saturated water temperature table. Table A6, the superheated water table. And very, very rarely, because it's not all that helpful, table A7, the compressed liquid water table. But the ones I want to focus in on are the saturated water pressure table and the saturated water temperature table. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, for each of these tables, you have a lot of information, okay? It gives us specific volume right here in these first two. It gives us specific vapor. Oh, sorry, um, it gives us internal energies. It gives us enthalpies. And even off to the edge, which we can't see because I have to scroll over to make it appear, it gives us entropies. All these values. But all you need to worry about are these first two, okay? Now, this is a saturated water temperature table, which doesn't honestly matter. Like, the whole temperature versus pressure thing is completely unimportant. The big thing is, what do you know? If you know the temperature at a particular state, so let's say that you know your water is at 25 degrees Celsius, and you know it's a saturated liquid, okay? You know that. Well, if you know it's a saturated liquid, then this is its pressure right here. 3.1698, that would be its pressure. Always. If it's somewhere in the saturated liquid to saturated vapor range, if it's a mixture of the two, so if it's one or the other, then the pressure at that state is your saturation pressure. Always. Every single time. Never changes. Now, if I scroll down, I can get all the way to my saturated, um, sorry, my saturated water pressure tables. In this case, it's saying, what do you know? You know your pressure. And so let's say I know that my pressure is 100 kilopascals. Then my saturation temperature is right here, 99.61. And if I am at 100 kilopascals, and I am some sort of saturated liquid or saturated vapor, or somewhere in between, the problem states that, then I know my temperature without a doubt is 99.61 degrees Celsius. Until that liquid gets subcooled, and so it's now a compressed liquid, or until that vapor gets superheated, and so it's you know, no longer a mixture, that will be your temperature. After it's superheated, the temperature can change. After it's subcooled, the temperature can change. But for those middle three states, saturated liquid, saturated vapor, or some mixture of the two, when you have a particular pressure, you will have the other temperature. They are completely connected. And here is the key I want to give you. Sometimes it will give you a pressure, you'll calculate a pressure, that you can't find in this table right here. You look and say, ah, my pressure is like 19.7 or something. I've got 20 right here. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, my pressure is you know, 19.7. And I look over here and I see, ah, oh, rats. I've got 20. I've got 15. I don't have 19.7. Now, you can interpolate. That's completely fine. You can do that. But if you're careful and you go and check your saturated water temperature tables, sometimes what you'll find is you'll find the exact number you're looking for right here. And it does not matter. If I know that my pressure is... Let's pick one that's actually on here. 12.352 kilopascals, for whatever reason. Maybe I calculated it, maybe it was given in the problem statement. Then I know what my saturation temperature is. It's 50 degrees Celsius. So you can use either one of these columns to set your place. The temperature table is just on nice round numbers, and the pressure table is on nice round numbers. But you don't have to use one or the other. You just use whatever one has the number that's closest 
and are easiest for you to use to get what you need. So make sure you check both tables, table A4 and A5, when you're looking for things because it can help you out a lot. And just so you know, we're going to do several problems with this. So you'll see a lot of practice in how you use the tables to solve problems. So thank you all for listening. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.